In this video, we're going to talk about how to identify egg cases that you found as part of the Shark Trust's great egg case hunt. So if you found some fairly intact egg cases or you're an experienced egg case hunter, then you may be able to skip straight to the recording part. If you're new to egg case hunting, we'd recommend that you soak your egg cases first so that they're fully hydrated and they expand to their true form. This means you can see the features much more clearly. So all you need to do for that is pop them in a container of water and just leave them to soak for a few hours. If you push them down every now and again so they submerge and really soak up the water, then it will help and make sure that they become fully hydrated. Once they're fully hydrated, you can crack on with identifying your finds. So to help with identification, we have an identification guide, which you can look at to compare species. And we also have a step-by-step -step ID key which will guide you through the process, including looking carefully at the size, shape, and different features. Or you can use the Shark Trust's Citizen Science app on your phone, which will guide you through some of the different features. We do have some identification guides for other regions outside of the UK, such as Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, Turkey, the Eastern Seaboard of the USA, and Australia, with more to come, so watch this space. Around 44% of chondrichthians, so that's our sharks as well as our skates, rays and chimeras, reproduce by laying eggs, and this is called oviparity. There are five different families covering 13 orders which are oviparous. Egg cases in each family are generally distinctive in shape, but of course there can be exceptions. By looking at the size, shape and different features, you can usually identify down to species level, though some species are incredibly similar, meaning it may only be possible down to genus level. So looking at these families, first off we've got the cat sharks. These are usually elongated or oblong in shape. They often have curled tendrils on the corners and the female will swim around seaweed to tie the egg case on using these tendrils. So it's almost like string. And that's to act as an anchor so the egg case doesn't drift away. The skate egg cases tend to be squarer or more rectangular in shape and they can have this pointed horn on each corner, though these aren't always that obvious like in the flapper skate. They're often laid on the seabed and some have a mucous membrane which is kind of sticky and attracts sand and detritus on the seabed to help weigh them down and some like the flapper skate are kind of posted into rock crevices. Then we have the horn sharks, so these are spiral shaped egg cases and they resemble a corkscrew. Species like the Port Jackson and the California horn shark will lay these egg cases and then the females will pick them up in their mouths and screw them into rocks where they'll stay whilst they develop. We have the Chimera, which are more spindle or leaf-like in shape, and these are laid on the, the seabed. And then finally we have the carpet sharks, and these are more rounded in shape or oval. So there are a few key features to look for when identifying your egg case. First, work out the form. Is it a cat shark, a skate, a horn shark, a chimera, or a carpet shark? Then you move on to the features. Firstly, does the egg case have tendrils? How thick are the margins of the egg case? Are they thick or are they really thin? Does the egg case have aprons or does it not have aprons? Does the egg case have keels, so an extra material running down the edge of the egg case, or are the edges neat and tidy? When looking at the skates in particular, are the horns long or are they medium short in length? And also consider if the horns are fine and delicate or if they're quite thick and robust. Lastly, size can be very helpful, although egg cases can vary in size due to their condition or natural variation. When measuring, only measure the capsule, not the horns or the tendrils. So now for some troubleshooting. Older egg cases might not rehydrate so well, and so they might still be a bit warped and not expand to their original size. And this can make some of the key features harder to spot. The range of sizes indicated on the ID guides are only approximate. So you might find some species that are smaller or larger than stated, but this is fine. Egg case horns and tendrils are really delicate, and so they might break off by the time they're stranded and you find them on the beach. Sometimes it's obvious that a horn is missing, but sometimes it can be misleading. For example, like mentioned earlier, a small spotted cat shark egg case without the tendrils can be easily mistaken for a black mouth cat shark. 
The next step, once you've identified your finds, is to record them. If you're confused or you're struggling to make an ID, you can always submit a record as an unknown and we can take a look at it. Or you can drop us a line via email or through social media and we'll always be happy to help you. Next up, we'll be taking you through the recording process.